this is NDTV and you're watching Classics. Professor Chandrasekhar made his initial discovery, the Chandrasekhar Limit as it's called, when he was just 19 and on a ship setting off for England. When he later presented it before the Royal Astronomical Society, it was attacked and ridiculed by Eddington, one of the most eminent scientists of the time. Nobody there or later spoke up in defense of an obscure 24-year-old Indian. A lesser man would have been destroyed. Chandrasekhar stayed friends with Eddington and calmly carried on with his own scientific interests as a fellow at Trinity and later as a professor at Chicago University. Over the years, he wrote a number of books which have come to be regarded as classics, not just for their content, but also for the clarity and elegance of his writing. The Nobel Prize came in 1983 when he was 73 years old, a footnote almost to his other achievements. Professor Chandrasekhar grew up in Madras in a family that set great store by intellectual attainment. His father's younger brother, C. V. Raman, received the 1930 Nobel Prize for Physics. Chandrasekhar was a brilliant student of physics and mathematics, with a keen interest in literature and music. He got his master's degree from the Madras Presidency College and his doctorate from Trinity College, Cambridge. But we've come full circle now, so I'll let him tell us the story of his life in science the satisfaction it brought him, as well as the regret. This was the last time he ever appeared on film, so we are very fortunate we had the privilege of meeting him. I was an undergraduate. I knew very little physics, but the physics which I used was something which I could have read and I was curious what would happen if that was applied to stars. And I found this limit. But I don't see that it tells anything about my, my future work. I mean, I could have stopped at that point, and, and the discovery would be there. But if I am what I am in the sense that I have lived in science for 60 years and pursued science, that to me is far more important. The important thing is, no matter what other people say, you value certain things you do because of your personal reaction not because somebody else says it is good. No matter, uh, even if it involves getting a prize of uh, $100,000. There is nothing very much to my life. It can be said in three sentences. I mean, I left India in 1930, came back six years later, and married a girl who, was, who had waited all that time, came to Chicago and lived happily <laughs> ever after. <laughs> well, anyhow. I was uh, born in 1910 and uh, we left Lahore after some six years and we were in Allahabad for two years and we finally settled down in Madras in 1918. My father taught me English, arithmetic, and so on by himself. And my mother t taught me Tamil. This home education was really more intense. Our educational upbringing was purely by our parents. Mother used to teach, my father used to teach. And our house was more like an educational institution than a home. Even when in college, 
Yes. We had no freedom to tune the radio and listen to film music or anything. If we hear the footsteps of our father returning from we we'll just walk, it off. We'll switch it off and run off to our rooms. My grandfather, of course, was a professor of mathematics and I still have one of his books which he used to read. I mean, my grandfather's book with his signature, I still have it. So the, the intellectual background was there. There was this family tradition and which was sort of unspoken but there. You take Raman, for example, people tell me, weren't you inspired by him? But the fact is that uh, I didn't see very much of him. I did go to Calcutta in 1928 when the Raman effect was discovered and was there uh, with his students. But he was far too busy for me to uh, participate. And moreover, I mean, already at that time, I knew the kind of science qualitatively, and that is very different from my uncle's. So as scientists, uh, we are in some ways, in our motivation, poles apart. But of course, I developed a very strong attachment to my mother. She was uh, very ambitious. For example, uh, the Indian father at that time always wanted their son to get high in government service, uh, apply for ICS and so on. But I didn't want to do that. And my mother encouraged me not to be persuaded by my father. So that in some sense, she had a greater understanding of what I wanted to be. My father almost puritanically. <laughs> of course, he knew that uh, even uh, as a, in school, I was reading things like calculus and so on, uh, very much before I was required to, you see. I wanted to go into mathematics honors. He dissuaded me and practically uh, compelled me, that is too strong a word, but still put enormous pressure that I should take physics. Because according to him, physics is more likely to have a future from the point of view of obtaining position. So I took physics. But then it happened that uh, by the end of two, uh, two years, I had already had a paper of mine published in the Royal Society. So my father realized at that time that he should not put any further pressure on me to proceed to the Indian Civil Service or something like that. I got a Government of India scholarship and that meant I, I went to England. 